So hi everyone, my name is Gabriel Cris Souza. I'm a third year of this here in Yashu. My supervisor is Mr. La Escola, and I'm going to present to you about cellular models to study SARS-CoV-2. Uh, maybe you don't know, but viruses are the most abundant entities on, on Earth, the most abundant organisms. And a phrase that our virology, virologists like to say is that we have more virus than stars in the sky. Uh, they are important forces of, net, uh, of selection and population control, and they have been protagonists of many episodes of humankind. We have, for example, smallpox, measles, Spanish flu just one century ago, and HIV in the 80s. Now we are, vi we are living one of these moments of protagonists of viruses with COVID. It's a disease caused by a coronavirus that hit out in Wuhan. You, you already know that. And just to say about numbers, we have now around 6 mi million people dead of COVID. So it's worth it that we have this fascination about viruses and also this fear. And it's worth it too to want to study them to understand this better these organisms. And to study it, the easiest way to have it is having cellular models in our laboratory so we can produce and also we can study the biology or even doing tests of antiviral. Uh, now for SARS-CoV-2, we have four, five major cell lines. Um, they, are, they are permissive cell lines because of the entry factors that each one has different expression of these entry factors and that will guide the virus, which pathway you take to enter, if it's endocytic or viral host membrane fusion, for example. And the aim of my studies was to answer some questions that the pandemic brought to us using cellular models. So you will probably remember during the beginning of pandemic, we had a higher mort morti mortality of the, of the virus, especially if you see the waves of the countries in Europe. And everyone was looking why, why it's so mortal and what, what are the risk factors for it. And we have age, we have sex, and we have uh, other disease, pre-existing disease. And one of the most common pre-existing disease in, in fatality cases of COVID was hypertension. Uh, people that, that has hypertension, most of the time, they take medicines to control the blood pressure. One of the most used in the world is Losartan. It's an angiotensin receptor blocker. And it works by binding to a receptor called HR1 receptor to prevent the vasoconstriction. And when it binds, it suggested that it increased the expression of AC2. And AC2 is the major receptor for our SARS-CoV-2. So our question is, if this increase occurs, it's, it facilitates the entry of the virus uh, in the cell. So to test this, we choose uh, to, to do in vivo six cells because they express the AT1 receptor, they express the, the AC2 receptor, and they also allow the complete cycle of SARS-CoV-2 with a cytopathy effect. We treated these cells with seven different ARBs for three days, and we evaluated the, the effect in the expression of these receptors. So first, uh, for... AC2 receptor in RNA level, we saw an increase in expression for all of the treatments and a decrease of the AT1 receptor for all treatments too. It, that was expected because it's where the medicine binds to. And in proteic level, we have four from seven treatments with AC2 expression increased. And we also checked if this increase occurs in, in the surface level of the cell. And, it, and we observed that for AC2. So after that, we kept this treatment for 72 hours and we infect the cells for more 24 four hours. We collect the supernatant to check the viral release. And we also did a Western blot of the infected cells. So we have first an uh, increase of viral release by the PCR for azeosartan, eprosartan, and ibesartan, which is exactly the same that we have increased spike protein inside the cells. And Talking about infective particles, azeosartan and ibesartan had increased release of infective particles. When we change uh, this uh, cellular approach for a human cell, we didn't see the same. We see cacao could be reduced, and in cacao it makes no difference 
most probably because these cells doesn't express uh, higher levels of HI1 receptor. And while I was doing this work, we are also seeing an emergence of different variants of, of concern, a variant of interest, alpha delta, you know that already. And everyone was scared about the impact of these in, in the epidemics in transmission, in vaccines, and it's totally worth it. But uh, we are scared about, is my protocol still working for all these variants? And what I did was basically taking all these variants, more than 30 isolates, and we infected three different cell lines, Vero, CACO2, it's intestinal cell, and CALO3, it's pulmonary cell, and we evaluated the, the viral release of this by PCR. So what you have, it's this range of isolates from different variants, and the conclusion of this figure is basically that uh, it, there is a high variability between the isolates. So now I will merge them in, in variants so we can have a look. Uh, for VRU E6 cells, we don't see difference between any variant because this, these viruses are produced and isolated in VRU cells, so they are adapted to it. But we can see some difference for CALU3 for the alpha one, and in CALU, no, in CACO2, sorry, and in CALU3 have decreased in alpha fitness, except for one isolate of this that's totally different, and for beta. But we have increased to delta and gamma. And here in D is just to compare the release of, of different cells. So we have Vero and CACO with similar release and CALU3 producing less virus. So after seeing this profile of replication, we tried to take a look on, on the genome, and I constructed this network graphic where we have some isolates here, and the arrow going to mutations on, 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 the, on the genome. And we have the, it was a great distribution because it gave me a similar patterns of, of my tree, of my phylogeny and HP3, and we have some muta interesting mutations that was preserved in all the isolates, but I couldn't associate any profile with one specific mutation, so we concluded it's a combination of these mutations. And a third, in a third moment, we started seeing that a, a lot of reports of SARS-CoV-2 in animals. And the animal that we are seeing most events of infection was mink. We are seeing a lot of outbreaks in mink farms and some transmission between minks and between minks to human. And as Wahiba probably told you, we had a prevalence of Marseille 4 variant, we call here Marseille 4, and during the end of 2020 to, to the beginning of 2021. And this, this specific variant was suggested to be emerged from mink. So what we did was taking all these variants, just like in the, the, the previous paper, and testing two mink lung cells. Just because I, I told you uh, cytopathic effect is important, these two cells, they don't show any cytopathic effect, even seven days post-infection. But we could detect the, the viral release by PCR. And the interesting cases here is, there is no big difference between the first day to seven days, so the release occurs in the beginning of the infection. And for Omicron variant, we didn't saw this release. So here is a heat map of delta delta CT between the variants. We are going to see also the, the bigger variant between the isolates, even if they are the same uh, variant, and no replication for Omicron. Oh, pardon. And then we decided to take a look in the synaptic of this because it was suggested that the release is always in the beginning. And we have for these two cells, here is by PCR and here is by TCID50. So when I'm talking about this, I'm talking by infective particles. Uh, we have a, a similar profile for the three variants that's not Omicron, but in Omicron, we don't usually see any viral release. Here it's curious that the one that most produces infective particles is Marseille 4. Here we have all the similar and, and really separated the, the other variants from Omicron. And we tested also in CALO3. CALO3 is human. So in CALO3, we also observed that Omicron doesn't replicate well. 
And the conclusion of this, and by the literature too, is that Omicron doesn't have a good fitness for, for lung, but for the superior tract, uh, respiratory tract. And to, to confirm that you are seeing it's not a problem on our Omicron, but a problem of the cell in re replicate this, this virus, we did it in, in vivo and we saw basically the same profile, the adaptation of all the, all the strains. Uh, we did also some cycle with, with electronic microscopy. Uh, the, the most interesting here is for the both cells, we saw the extended um, endoplasmatic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, especially here, and here is one of the, the virus inside the cell. And for this cell, the second cell, we, we also observed a reduced contact between the infected cells. We also saw this for for CACO2 cells because of the release of a cateri. So as conclusion, it's really hard to find a perfect model to, to, uh, to any virus, including SARS-CoV-2. And it, you need to give up of some characteristics to, go, to have uh, other answers to your questions. And it's essential to still characterizing the new variants. And here is basically a decision tree that we produced to help to, to find the best uh, cellular model for your question. That's it. Obrigado por sua atenção. Thank you for your attention. And that's all.